So once we have the slides, I can provide to you another end user confirmation of what Janice has shown to us as quantitative results so that this has some meaning and reality for production units. Okay, better? Okay. So until that starts, so I can tell you that so I'm about six years in BSF now working with control systems. From a background, I'm a theoretical physicist. And I'm by now responsible for DCS systems, standardization, et cetera. And also I have a role in our senior project, BSF 4.0, which is handling um, digitalization throughout the company. And there I'm leading an IoT lab for manufacturing and a lot of experiences shared in this presentation will be from, oh, it's even getting better. Um, will be from that part. Uh, the presentation, once you see it, um, is done commonly uh, from BSF and also with uh, Timo Klingenmeier here sitting and later on the panel from Inmation. Since we're reporting on uh, some of uh, our common solutions, we have done. It's less about analytics, it's more about infrastructure. It's called enabling global manufacturing intelligence. So it's more about the infrastructure and what you need to then do the analytics we have seen in the uh, foregoing talk and also the results uh, in the comprehensive presentation Janice has given. Oh. Just in time. Yeah. OK, so a couple words on BSF. So this is not for advertisement purposes, but I want to give you a slight idea so about uh, what we're talking about here. So that our chemistry is basically used in all industries. That's not a very um, decisive factor here. Social responsibility and environmental protection might be important to me, but also not the topic. So what's interesting maybe here is the number of sites, so 338. Six Verbund sites, which are major sites, which are spread around the continents equally, two in the US, two in Europe, and two in Asia Pacific, and 112,000 employees we need to provide some infrastructure to. Also the business segment, so here I would like to have a brief look from an automation guy's uh, point of view. So on the right hand side we have the topics about oil exploration on and offshore. Uh, on the left side with the basic chemicals, that's typically large condi plants, the dispersions for example, then our complex batch plants and then there's also a lot of downstream production with a high customer proximity, uh, for example, um, construction chemicals. So we are reproducing very small batches close to the customer. And of course, all of these things deserve an individual solution, but it should not be overly many infrastructures which we have to build up so it's still maintainable for us uh, with a reasonable total cost of ownership. Okay, and so I would like to start with one of those examples. So what I here view as manufacturing intelligence um, with the example of the reliability center. Um, typically, I, I like to view the solutions from the problem and not from its fanciness. So not first put it in the cloud and then see what value it has. Um, so here about reliability, it's about basically unexpected losses which affect everyone who is uh, operating large equipment, especially large rotating equipment. And what has been seen is that having sufficient expertise on site is here really a differentiator how well you can use equipment. So if you have experts for different machines on site, you are more likely to use that with a high confidence uh, than if you have very remote expertise, need to fly people in or need to um, find workarounds. And since a couple of time now, there are tools available on the market which help you to gather the information to bring it to one single spot and there also to have uh, proper analytics or then have the experts view it. And that's the reason why a couple of years back we started to build an organization around that in the reliability center. So an organization which has different data sources about critical equipment and in this um, offers a service to different production sites in helping them keeping reliable operation. And just to have one example, so what this can mean with a selected value add. So this is um, not too much in this machine things. Um, here occurrence has been monitored uh, in the condition monitoring that even though the flow has been constant and the load of the first stage of a compressor was also constant with a temporal spike here, the load of the second stage went up quite high. 
So instead of running on, so this compressor was scheduled for an addition, additional maintenance and uh, in broken suction valve in the end, got a confirmation of these initial findings and could be repaired. So what this in the end means but is that all the efforts we have done around the reliability center, a large part of that was paid by this one example. Because of what we could prevent here is a six-day unexpected downtime and much higher maintenance cost. Because if you would have went on to operate this compressor, we would have much, had much larger damage than simply uh, exchanging this one wealth. So these are the best practices that we want to use more on this equipment and also on, for example, process optimization issues. Yeah, as I said, so reliability is, is one application, but within this global manufacturing intelligence framework, there are a lot more solutions which can provide value. To name some as predictive maintenance, but also the batch efficiency monitoring, so that very well suits uh, what uh, the, the speaker before me has said. Uh, automation component integration, looking at alarm management in a global infrastructure, controller performance management, where you can also extract overall KPIs about how well your automation systems are running and if plants are still on track, or if there is a slow degradation of the automation and how well it actually suits the production needs uh, and, and the monitoring of the automation structure itself. But unfortunately, there are some hurdles to be overcome here some barriers. So on the left side, first of all, this is the availability of data, which can be a problem for us. For a lot of plants, and I, I think this is true in chemical industry in general, it may be a challenge simply to get the data from the field into a control room. So we should basically have hard infrastructure, but there might be X barriers, uh, which cut off the signals. Field bus did not really make it to the plants uh, in the extent we would have like this, and then even if like asset management information arrive in the control room, uh, then it might be that you can open a, a web graphic on your asset management station, but you cannot extract those data in any machine readable format, and you cannot use it forward in some superior analytics tools. And the second thing is, you also need useful data, so the quality and the smartness of the data because those data will be more and more input to advanced analytics, but the results can only be as good as the data are. And here it's also too important to, to pick the right data and put them into the analytics. So I'm not a big fan of simply collecting, first of all, all the data and then see what you can do with it. That's probably uh, also not how you have done it with your fermentation. So you probably had in mind some temperatures or something which you wanted to see and not uh, the pressure of the steam lines, etc. Because if you had all that, it will also uh, lead to dilution of your actual results. So in a conclusion, what we need is we need smart data which combine different information sources and that we can then use this for various applications. But of course, also there, there are some hurdles to be overcome. So how we actually do that? We have various data sources on the ground, different machines, compressors, the process itself, and we have different analytics tools. The worst thing kind of would be if you have one application per device, so which you might buy from the device vendor itself, but then you might end up with a lot of screens in your control room. So you want to consolidate that in, in fewer applications. And then it, the decisive factor becomes how many different device types can a single application connect to. And then there are basically two different solutions So how this might work. The first one would be that all devices, or at least uh, device classes, share a common semantic or a dictionary. So at least that all valve positioners have the same language that on the same address the the same parameter is, but this is quite unrealistic, especially it's unrealistic in view of all our installed base, or that each application is engineered to manage and interpret the data coming from the devices, which means that you have an effort times n, n being basically the number of applications you have there. So and this brings us to the justification of having a middleware here at this point. So basically an information broker as a key topology to break that problem and to bridge, be a gap to bridge um, for further digitalization uses. 
And this will be a key also to build then meaningful models with a reduced effort. So basically, because if you interpret the data once meaningful, maybe only once for your enterprise, but then you can use it in basically infinite number of applications. Scaling up such a solution to global scale has various challenges. So what I should have shown you on the previous slide was basically the challenge for single plant as also. But if you want to scale that up and have global solutions, so you have the more problems. The first of all is the security. So if you're leaving the plant with information, so with transport security, endpoint security, user authentication, et cetera, and that you have to meet various regulations which might be different from country to country. The performance on this large scale, availability also including robustness. So if you have a maybe a not so high performance connection to some remote sites, you still want to have the data reliable and available. Um, this might also be significant initial costs, license, hardware, the deployment work. Uh, maintenance might be high, which you need to consider, the life cycle of these solutions, and of course the standards. So because as I've shown you, so there are various business units with different needs, but still you want to standard to some extent, you cannot fully standardize it because the applications are so much different. And basically, so one finding, and this is very much so from the IoT lab we are running with different test scenarios, is that this market of middleware solutions is important, but not to offend anyone, but it's not really fully um, developed so far. What we see here is that on the one hand side, on, from the top, you have major IT providers which would have I would like to have a large share of these applications and uh, to provide analytics to the data, but they do not have necessarily the domain knowledge to connect to the various data, and that might also not be in their interest, because it's, this is a very fine-grained um, demand and not so scalable as you would uh, program, for example, an operating system. On the other hand, talking to the manufacturers on the downside, um, you will see that their IT capabilities might show room for improvement. And as a consequence, we have these middleware solutions, so, and which is populated by new vendors. We tested various use cases in IoT, our IoT lab, so attaching clouds basically directly to uh, the manufacturing equipment. And there have been various consortia of vendors. And they always had some vendor with them, which I hardly or completely did not know before, but they needed him to interpret the data and to make it into some readable format like uh, MQTT, AMQP was very uh, popular in these applications to provide this transport layer. So, and this brings us um, to where we also now are having broader use cases with the Inmation software. Basically, so Timo would be the base, better speaker for that, but that would be would blow up our time schedule completely, so I do it. But that's also the reason why I need uh, some paperwork in front of me. So we have been looking for such platforms to realize certain cases. And um, Inmation might be a new player in this field, but we are cooperating since two years and can also bring in our requirements uh, into new features in this cooperation, into innovative and effective solution, also from a lifecycle management perspective. And one of the features here, for example, is the horizontal and vertical integration that the solution provides, that we can have a central management of the solution from one place and easily access the different Inmation connectors in the world. So what we see here is then one application which we use so that we are connecting data from a layer three with a very low footprint of the solution. Basically, it's one executable more we need uh, per region, and then the low footprint also leading to a low TCO. Uh, and according to how this individually can be done with just your security policy, to bring together those level three PIMS data plus additional machine data that you can do global analytics at all. Um, here are some of the security features of the solution, which I, again, need to look up. So uh, the solution provides a real-time wide area connection uh, with different security features. The single port TCP socket being very much favorable for our firewall rules and also making our IT happy. Uh, a prioritized compressed uh, transport of um, 
encrypted data and running our, over our BSF one in real time. On top of this core capability of providing connectivity, so which is the main part we use here, uh, the Mation solution has several other modern technologies on top of it, uh, like data-driven dashboards and HTML5, and you can also apply some streaming analytics. But as I said, so if you want to hear more, so you can either ask during the panel discussion or uh, visit Timo's booth 18. Okay, so now back on solid ground. Uh, currently, we are having two main use case streams which we are realizing so in this setup. Um, the one being a connectivity infrastructure for our MES applications. And what we observed here is that we have nearly 100% data availability versus 85% on a certain connection we had before to some more remote sites, which we had here due to lags uh, in the level four tunnel and transportation. Um, and this was also a proof of concept and for further use cases. And the more recent thing we have started is a rollout uh, in our predictive maintenance use cases. And here in Mation has also an important part um, as, as a key component in the global rollout. Up to date, the system is on four, si four different continents, a dozen of facilities, hundreds of distributed data sources, and right now it's running on like 50 machines with 300 CPU cores, so which are by far not loaded, but which also gives an impression that you can have a widespread system and basically a cheap supercomputing so from this. And currently we're foreseeing further use cases and projects uh, having in the pipeline. Okay, so I hope I'm still in time, coming to the conclusion. So the monitoring and analytics applications can only be as good as the data input. Sometimes a good data input is already enough simply to see what's going on and the experienced expert will know what's happening without any neural network or something else. But even today, 2017, we have major hurdles, also sometimes in new plans, to guarantee high data availability and interpretability of the data. So here, a broker layer is at least a very good midterm solution for efficient and effective integration of those data. And as I've discussed, so the market for these solutions still has some room for improvement, especially looking at global scalability of those solutions. But finally, I would also like to say I have not completely given up uh, on any um, future integrations. So there are still activities underway, like uh, the Industrial Internet Consortium, also in cooperation with Industry 4.0, and that there might be tools like administration shells, et cetera, supporting service-oriented uh, interaction, and that the data acquisition might also look different. But for now, this is a very good solution for us working. Thank you very much.